Hi there, uh, this is of course Nick back on the Get Me Off Grid video blog. This is being recorded at about 9 in the morning on Sunday. This is day 2, so I've had like a whole night of basically being off grid. Uh, let's start from the top. Last night, in the dead of the night, the olive oil lamp was tremendous because the yellow flame gave off quite so much light. It really did light up the whole of downstairs. Uh, and gave a very good quality of ambient light. Obviously for uh, when you need like more precise illumination, like when you want to see to do fiddly things, you still need to use your portable torches. So your thinking has to change. You've got to have one of these in your pocket all the time and you've got to prepare for before night comes and make sure one of these is always in your pocket and you know where the other one is for when this one runs out or you've got some other form of lighting on you anyway. In the dead of the night I woke up about, I don't know what time, but it was still dark. Uh, instinctively I reached for the reading light beside my bed, which of course didn't actually turn on when I clicked the switch because it wasn't plugged in. It wasn't plugged in because I'm doing this as an off-grid experiment. Uh, there was a moment of panic or concern. I had to tell myself that, no, this is perfectly alright, you know where the torch is. I had to tell myself, you know, in my mind's eye, uh, you know, to re re rehearse basically where the thing was so that I would know where my source of illumination was essentially. So it's a different way of thinking if you're doing this like uh, as an off grid solution without the use of a large, let's say, 12 volt battery and a large 12 volt lighting system and lights where you know where they are and you know where the switches are. That's the first thing I would say. The radio packed in uh, because the battery ran out. I think the battery in that particular radio is okay for short bursts of entertainment. It's not good for trying to hear an entire lecture, which is bad because I was listening to the Reith lecture last night and I, you know, I needed to hear the rest of it. So I had a, two breaks of 30 seconds when I was winding the thing back up again. So I would have to update the radio at some point. Uh, apart from that, the night went on quite smoothly. Uh, I didn't put the heating on, I just put a jumper on when it got um, closer to midnight and I was getting a bit chilly, but again, still doable. This is still being done, of course, at the height of summer, so the likelihood of me freezing is very remote indeed. Again, very doable. Uh, breakfast this morning, uh, my oatmeal, sorry, oat muesli with linseed and water, because that's what I have. Obviously that's off grid already, so there's not, nothing really to report there. Before I go to church this morning, I'm going to get some more retention cookers going with some more rice. So I've got some rice already pre-cooked for when I have my lunch today. Uh, which I think will probably be a stir fry. Mm. What else to report? Still dreading getting on with my washing load, but that's just going to be part and parcel of the fun. And I'm about to get myself washed and ready for church this morning. Which will mean boiling up more water. It is more of a drag this way. It really is. You just think to yourself, oh my god, can I really face, you know, just like boiling water in the sauce and filling up the can and adding extra cold water to it, making sure the temperature's right, um, and then trying to wash my whole body just, just basically using that. Uh, because you also know it's inefficient and also when you want to like rinse then you have to get get more water on the go and you've got to make sure you've got the ventilation so you're not uh, you know you're not going to die from carbon dioxide asphyxiation or carbon monoxide if there is any carbon monoxide coming off that butane flame I don't think there is but in case there is and so on and so forth uh, so once again yes there are still some challenges but and once again, this is also still doable. We have a lot of luxuries in normal Western life. Okay, an awful lot of luxuries. We just take these things comparatively for granted. I mean, is it, I'm not, you know, walking down to the local stream or river to fetch the water, as people are doing in some countries. I'm still using water coming out of the tap. Okay. So... I'm still a very, very, very lucky person by comparison with a lot of people who are enforced to live off-grid. Because, you know, they're living in mud huts or, you know, shanty towns and so on and so forth. But these are people who we can learn from. 
right, because they've got more strength, fortitude and courage than the Westerners who are so used to having a convenience meal they can shove in a microwave for two minutes and then hey presto they can eat straight away. The rest, you know, in a slightly more primitive society, I'm using the word primitive very loosely because obviously the people aren't primitive, but the society is primitive because they don't have the infrastructure that we have. They've had to develop more coping skills. Alright, that's it. But we can develop them too and we can practice. And it's almost like training because I just re remember that power cut I had two Decembers ago and it was just like, oh, you know, the whole world has been cut off from me. But if you're suddenly enforced to be in something similar to that through choosing to do a week off grid, it stops being a total bother. You can get used to it. The other thing that's quite interesting was that during the day yesterday, when it was thoroughly over overcast and the sky was grey, it actually felt depressing. But at night, when the quantity of illumination I had was less, but I was just relying upon my handheld torch and the olive oil lamp flame, I didn't feel depressed. I felt cosy. Maybe that's an evolutionary thing. I don't know. But that's the way it just seems to be. As far as the olive oil lamp is concerned, it's still good, but the glass got very hot. So what I might do is have two of them going, and so I can burn one, run it for an hour, then light the second one, blow the first one out, just to try and reduce the likelihood that I'll get glass breaking and exploding. Either that, or I just use one of my kiln the jars, which is much more solid. Okay, kiln the jar, of course, being the equivalent of a American Mason Vol jar. Okay. Uh, that's all I've got to report, really. It's it's not actually all that bad. It's just a few more chores to do, just a bit more planning that has to be done, and you can still have quite a healthy life if you are living off grid. Even though I haven't got the full domestic infrastructure together that I want to have eventually, including the right quantity of battery storage, the right quantity of solar panels, the right quantity of wind generators, uh, possibly methane digesters, and uh, hydrogen digester if I want to generate gas using the electricity I've stored. I know that's an inefficient system, but it's still something that could provide more convenience if I wanted it. And so on and so forth. So, I'll, yeah, I'll get there. Remember, links below. I do want to get a small holding. I do want to have land so that I can basically farm it and I can eat off-grid as well through having all my food grown on the land, and I mean all my food, and then using te technology such as dehydration, um, vacuum packing, also canning, and um, so on and so forth as means of food preservation and storage, things that I've already been learning and I've been using on a small scale so far. That's essentially the end goal, and one of the reasons I'm doing this, yes, it is to promote, this is you know one of my goals, and I'd like you to help me. I mean, the idea of being able to run retreats and invite let's say a handful of people down and say this is what I've done and these are the challenges I had and tell people the successes and failures I had, show people how to make their own photovoltaic solar panels, show people how to make their own heating panels and so on. You know, this this would be a good thing to do. If you want to help, there's a link down there. Looking forward to hearing from you soon and I'll be keeping you updated.